Hi, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Hung Nguyen. I'm GP in um, currently working in Dananong at an Aboriginal health service called Brunerong Health Service. Um, so I'm receiving the uh, GP of the Year Award, which is amazing. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, a quite a humbling experience to um, have this award bestowed on me by the RSCGP. Um, so thank you very much to the RACGP, um, to all its members and all my colleagues as well for uh, their nominations uh, for this award. Um, just in reflecting on the award, I guess um, people are often ask uh, what achievement has uh, uh, do I remember most, I suppose. Um, and... Uh, uh, I, I've been working in Aboriginal health for most of my career, I suppose, starting from, um, from when I was a GP registrar um, in the Northern Territory. And um, I have a very strong focus on community development and health promotion. Um, and so I guess my greatest uh, achievement or things that I'm most proud of are those projects that um, develop the community um, and to educate the community for long-term health outcomes, I suppose. Um, and so these, these uh, projects uh, I can recall fondly are related to the under fives um, anemia project, uh, which is a, a whole community project in um, a, a small remote community. Um, there are community, um, chronic disease self-management projects uh, in another remote uh, desert community as well. Uh, and currently, um, doing, during COVID, um, we're doing a, another project um, to educate the community about COVID and COVID uh, vaccines. It's called Community Talks COVID and has been going on um, since the start of the pandemic. Um, it's going really well. Um, and we're getting our community vaccinated. But more important than the community being vaccinated, I think that the community understands why uh, they uh, need to be vaccinated and to protect themselves from COVID. So that's probably more important to me than, than the fact that uh, people are actually getting vaccinated as well. Um, other things that I have been involved in is education management. Um, starting my, uh, my life, in uh, um, an RTO named JUCET all those years ago and um, kickstarting the Indigenous Health Training Program, uh, which was very received, received by the GP registrar. And from there, I become the Director of Medical and Cultural Education uh, for the Northern Territory um, for the RTO up there as well. So that, that, was, a, that was a nice um, uh, period of time in the Northern Territory for uh, five years, uh, given back to the Northern Territory, who nurtured me as a GP registrar all those years ago as, as well. And since uh, leaving that job, I became the first censor for the National Faculty for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health at RACGP. Um, did that job for about nine years, um, and it's really good to see the faculty grow uh, from the early stages um, to a really mature and um, uh, a factor that has a lot of vision for uh, Aboriginal health, for supporting Aboriginal um, registrars um, and also working very collaboratively with a lot of um, uh, national as well as state Aboriginal community controlled health organisations. So really proud to have uh, been involved in that process. And uh, I guess through that process, um, I was involved in um, developing at, or consolidating the Aboriginal health curriculum as well, um, which is a template for all GPs and GP registrar to uh, better their delivery of healthcare to Aboriginal people. Um, and through the process as well, I was uh, also uh, uh, responsible, I suppose you can say, um, to also develop the multicultural uh, health curriculum as well for the RSCGP. Again, these things are important to, to me because they are the template 
that RSCGP will use to um, measure the standards of GPs and GP registrar as they, as they go through that training. Um, uh, besides that, I have a really strong interest in um, community, oh, sorry, cultural competence training um, and worked with the board of Victoria for many years to ensure that uh, overseas trained doctors or IMGs um, uh, uh, are well orientated to the Australian health system. Um, through the cultural competency training, I also worked with Palliative Care Victoria for the last you know, three, three years or so um, to ensure the cultural competence uh, exists for their, everyone in the um, palliative care sector as well. And there's other, you know, other groups I've been involved with in um, cultural competence training as well, which, which has been um, great. And I'm still doing that at the moment. Um, I guess in the, as, as we progress through life and you try to find new challenges and, and new, uh, new opportunities, um, uh, this year I was able to be part of a, a really great team of um, game developers, um, health professionals, educators, social impact workers, I suppose. I'm not sure how I, I, I group those people, but we um, managed to um, run the first um, Games for Change Festival in Melbourne for the Asia Pacific this year. It was all online, unfortunately, but um, it was great to promote uh, video games or what they call serious games for uh, impact on, on the social uh, care on education and in health as well. So really, really proud to have those opportunities um, so far. Um, and it's been, been a good ride. Um, so it's just a little bit more than just uh, general practice that I've been involved with. I guess um, in the next uh, year or so, um, I'm really looking forward to 2022 when COVID is not uh, uh, feature highly, although it's still there. But uh, there's other projects I'm interested in now. Um, one of those is the GP workforce in um, Aboriginal Community Control Health Services in Victoria. Uh, have been working with Vacho uh, in the last year to uh, look at you know um, the challenges there. Um, that's that it has existed for a long time but uh, which distressed me to some degree that we haven't, haven't been making inroads into that um, after all that we, we know and all the research um, that we have done in um, GP workforce in um, rural, remote, as well as Aboriginal community control health services. So really looking forward to working with Vacho um, in that. Um, we're starting a, a health promotion project, as, as I told you at the beginning, I'm really interested in whole community projects. So we're doing a project called Games for Health Literacy uh, with our local Aboriginal community. Um, it's uh, it started, um, we're doing really well, it's co-design. We had elders in there, we have the youth in there, and, um, and uh, there's a few themes that are coming out the games. Um, initially, it's gonna be a little bit on COVID, a little bit on mental health issue and young people, a little bit on social isolation elder group as well. Um, but this is a long-term project, long-term in terms of, you know, four or five years, where we've developed um, small narrative-based games to educate the community about health, about the health system and how to navigate the health system um, uh, so that they can uh, thrive uh, in their lives as well. In terms of um, uh, cultural competence training, I've just been um, uh, recruited, I suppose, to deliver uh, cultural competence training uh, for the Australasian Institute of Clinical Governance, um, which, is, uh, which is great. Um, there's a module in there on culture in organisations. Um, and the module is called Culture and Collaboration. So I'm really looking forward to develop the curriculum with the AICG um, and, um, and improve uh, organisational culture um, from a clinical governance perspective in health 
health organization and, and health care. Um, so that's that's uh, that's what I'm looking forward to to 2022. Um, but I think the last thing I want to say is to thank a few people um, that has uh, that, that have grown me as a GP, um, as a GP who works uh, very uh, with a lot of focus on cult cultural competency and cultural competency training. And that uh, these group of people are really um, the Aboriginal people that I have been involved with um, since the very beginning. So I just want to call out some names. Um, now, for Aboriginal people out there who's listening to this, some of these people uh, may have died. So I just want to warn you about that. So when I was, uh, when I was a registrar working in Nulamboy and um, Galawinku, which is Elka Island, I just want to thank Jamalaka, Rapa, Boyan out there who've been, who are senior Aboriginal health workers who, who showed me the ropes on how to work with community. I also want to thank uh, um, TM, Theresa Matthews, who uh, was in, um, in a, uh, a small remote town called Lajmanu, who has been a great friend. And uh, traditionally, we are brothers and sisters as well. Um, thank you to Anne and Joyce Murugung from Numbawa as well. Great senior Aboriginal health workers who really supported me and who really um, worked a lot in the background, and I, I did notice that, to uh, make uh, our community development project a, a great success in that, that small little place in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Um, I'd like to thank also Tani Cooper, who's, who's been a great practice manager at Bridgerong Health Service currently, um, who, uh, who put in the hard yards uh, in hours, after hours, and show me what Aboriginal health uh, workers actually do, uh, even after hours. Uh, and we have a great collaboration at the moment um, to ensure great clinical governance at Binrong Health Service as well. But lastly, I just want to thank probably the, the most important person who grew me as a GP and a GP registrar, uh, and who still is a close friend and mentor, uh, and that's Ada Perry. Ada Perry is currently their cultural advisor for RACGP, um, Faculty for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health. Um, she, she was uh, the culture educator when I was a GP registrar in the Northern Territory. And uh, um, she, uh, she called me uh, brother very early on in our relationship. And I thought she called everyone brother, but uh, that wasn't the case, I noticed, later on. Uh, so I really, uh, she really took me under her wings and has uh, we've been in contact ever since in one way or another. And it was great to work with Ada as well when I was Director of Medical and Culture Education uh, at NTGPE for those five years. Um, lots of learning, uh, lots of friendship. And uh, it's great to, to have her still uh, as a mentor and friend to the state. So really thank all those Aboriginal people who actually grew me as a GP and a, um, uh, as a person as well. So thank you very much. Um, and, uh, and of course, again, I'd like to thank the RSCGP for bestowing the award on me this year. And um, uh, Good luck to everyone this year and all to the award winners. I hope you continue the great work for general practice, for our profession and for our community. Thank you very much, everyone.